Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to cover a node red content. I don't think I've done a node red content for a while now. Actually there is a few things coming but you might have noticed that I posted a picture on YouTube that I'm working on this project so um, I also feel obligated to <laughs> create an update on that even though it's not finished. It, it doesn't have all the features that I intended and I'm actually still waiting for a few parts to turn up from AliExpress which probably is going to take some time as Christmas is approaching. But what I've managed to do so far is I've purchased this RFID card reader and pin code device and or access control machine. And this is one of those, uh, you know, single access control solutions. So this device itself can hold, uh, you know, RFID tags and, and uh, pin codes and assign them to user. And it has also a lot of outputs to control relays. And if you have seen videos from the lock picking lawyer on YouTube, you probably know that these all-in-one access control solutions, they always have a security weakness because this device controls, for example, your door. So if you can gain access to the cables, I mean some of the cables are tucked under, underneath this, then you can actually open the door if you, can, if you know which connections to short. So the way I wanted to do this in Node-RED is I'm only going to use this unit as a entry device. So I'm not going to use the built-in features, I just want to have a nice, you know, good looking keypad entry and also RFID reader and I can get the data off, send it on to Node-RED and Node-RED is going to decide if you have access, if you can do things, if the door is going to open for you. And actually, um, I'm quite happy that I managed to do all this without knowing too much about, you know, RFIDs and stuff, because I managed to dig this information up that this unit can also be configured just as a reader. And I just need basically two cables and, uh, you know, a couple of libraries, and I'm able to get all the cards or the NFID tags that are scanned on this device or the pin codes that I entered. So from that point it was fairly easy to just you know put the information MQTT and build a solution around it over Node-RED. So the solution I have so far that you can use this reader to read NFID, RFID tags just like these that are supplied by the manufacturer. You can also enter pin codes and in the Node-RED side you can assign these you can assign the codes and also the text to users and then Node-RED is going to validate whether, you know, who is the user who scanned the RFID tag. And of course then, once the user is identified, you, uh, you can decide in your code what you want to do with it. You know, you open the door, you disable the alarm and I do have some other features as well. So you can, you know, block the users, you can restrict the users to only have access on certain days of the week or in certain hours of the day. And I think also, yeah, I also built in a solution that you do like two-factor authentication, which means that you scan your RFID tag and after that you also have to enter a PIN code or actually the other way around, doesn't really matter. So, you know, all the things that you would expect. And at the end, Node-RED is going to give you an information, who is the user that got identified? and then you can build your own code and you can decide what to do with it. And actually I want to use this device in two different ways. Uh, probably I'm going to have one mounted at the gate. So when I scan this then you know the gate can open or the door can open. And also probably I want to have uh, one or two of these just in the garden or you know outside my house. So because many times when I'm, I'm doing some garden work I let's say I want to turn the pump on so I can get you know water in the garden but I don't sometimes I don't want to get go inside or get my phone out because I'm in gloves so it would be nice if I can have you know pin codes programmed to certain actions so I would remember you know what would be the pin code to start the pump or open the garage door and do that sort of thing so it's it's not the user who gets identified, but it's the event that gets identified. So you can assign either RFID tags or PIN codes. And then once somebody enters those, then, you know, the door is, the garage door goes up or the pump starts running. And before we dive into the details, I just want to know that actually I'm, you know, fairly new to this whole, you know, RFID stuff. I'm not really a security expert. The one thing that I do understand that these are rewritable tags. So it's not like 100% secure. So if you are trying to use this to, 
let's say open up your house just be aware that this is not like a foolproof solution so if somebody gains access to these tags and reads them they can probably copy them so so I think I'm going to use these for things that are not critical so let's say open my gates so I can come in or you know if I go out with the kids to do bike and if I leave the you know I don't have to carry the you know the op door opening key or whatever the garage uh, or the remote so I can just come in with a code but that wouldn't allow me to get into the house or probably the other thing I'm going to do is I have a camera which is overlooking the uh, the front gate so if somebody enters the codes or sends the RFID that I'm going to get a picture of you know who is at the gates and the other features where I want to you know do things by entering some pin code I would probably make it that it can only be done if the alarm is not on so let's say if we leave the house and the alarm system is on then these codes would get automatically invalidated so again even if somebody knows the code wouldn't be able to come here when we are away and you know open the garage door so just you know keep this in mind because i think this is not really a serious security solution it's more like a convenient solution that that's all i want to say so let me give you a quick overview of the solution and as I said it's not complete I'm still working on it so there is a node red flow and which is not an awful lot at the moment but th there is a lot of coding done in some of these function nodes and also there is a you know, limited UI and so I've done two main things and as I said I wanted a way to identify users and then just validate them access and time restriction and that sort of stuff and I also wanted to validate events that could be completely separate so I've created two databases or you know structures where you can store all these so both of them is an array so that would be the user access where you can give you know who is the user what's the access level and then you know maybe you can decide that only somebody with an access level more than three would be able to open the door you can specify whether the user is locked, which days of the week the user has access. So 0 to 6 is all days. If the user needs two-factor authentication, which means basically he needs to use two identification methods. And in the IDs, you can specify multiple IDs, uh, which could be RFIDs, or they can be PIN codes as well. And uh, so I have one user, which is dad, and then another user, is, which is mom. And let's say we also have a cleaner who can only you know come on weekdays so zero is sunday one is monday and then you know all the way to six and uh, you know she can only come in between uh, 8 a.m and 6 p.m and she only has a pin code and and this information gets stored in a global variable which is called the access control and you are going to see in pretty much in every of my code that i have implemented the contact storage solution that is recommended by Node-RED. So I have now a memory and a file contact storage, which means that this uh, variable is persistent. So that would only work for you if you have that contact storage also set. So I'm storing all this to files, so this information doesn't get lost if my Node-RED restarts. So here I'm getting an event uh, from the reader when something, something gets scanned, and I know this uh, green one is assigned to me. So if I scan it, you can see that it says that it has been identified as dad and I use the RFID as the identification. And if I use the other one, that's mom and again RFID. And if I use a one, a black, which is not assigned to anyone, then it says it's unknown. And you can also see that there is a now pixel LED and then it gets flashed in various colors and then patterns based on the action. So, you know, long green is accepted, the red flashing is not accepted. And I, I'm not really sure if I have anything else configured at the moment, but uh, I think I do have a couple of pin codes as well. So for example, I can also come in with a pin code. So if I use 2233 hash, then that that was a dead again but identified by the pin code and if i use this one seven six two three and that was the cleaner and the pin and fortunately enough i'm within the days of week and also the time restriction and if you would enable the two-factor authentication you need to scan your rfid first and you either you scan your other rfid or you enter the pin code it doesn't distinguish but between the two and well that's the main thing i mean if you look at the code this is quite an extensive code already but it handles all these different scenarios 
and then based on whether you are accepted then the or the id is valid then the information comes through on the first node where the information is going to store the user and then the identification type so you can decide you know if it's the dad then you know open the garage door if it's mom then you know do something else or you can just validate the access level you are getting the access level in in this output as well so you can just decide as i said maybe you need access more than access level more than three to open the garage door or something like that and if something fails then the information comes out on the second pin so these are like timeouts and wrong codes and uh, you know invalid days of the week something like that and everything goes into this contraption because all the things that are coming from this device whether something is authenticated or not it gets stored in a table uh, so you have an access log and that access log also shows here so you can see the the last 10 entries so the various you know inputs and pin codes and everything and you can also create a report and you can just filter the report that okay i want uh, uh, let's say oh something wrong with these filters i need to check so but you will be able to check like okay show me all the rfid ones or the ones where you know it was me or you know success and you can use this access log report which you know all comes from a database table and if you want to use this database uh, logging then you can use this create statement to create the database and by the way i'm using sqlite and i've also done the event part of it which is very very similar to the to the user part of it so it's, the event still has a name it, it it can be blocked it has a days of week and it actually also have the time limit as well but i haven't configured it in any of the examples and you can also request the user confirmation so let's say somebody enters this code you know 45 let's check this one so 45 star 88 hash okay and now it's waiting for a, 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 a code oh sorry user confirmation is false but otherwise if i would set it to true then i also need to scan my own rfid or enter my pin code in order to validate myself and then the user can check whether my access level is higher than the access level which is required by the event so you know not every, even if somebody knows the code he might not be able to trigger the event if he doesn't have sufficient access so that's the idea behind the two and similarly to the user id it has two outputs on the first output you have the positive identification and the second one all the negative ones and this is the flow which runs the access log and uh, actually i have this inject node here which uh, uh, runs a query on the table and then automatically populates all the values so you know all the various error messages or error types that i have so now my drop downs are working so you can see that i you know these are all the successful identification based on a pin code or for example the rfid code so that's that's how it works and this is designed to handle multiple identification methods and that's why i said this project is not finished because for example i also received this i button reader which i also plan to incorporate into this one so you can decide whether you want to use pin codes rfid tags i buttons and this whole solution should be able to handle all of those uh, and of course you don't need to use if you like the i buttons you can just leave this uh, reader and use that one hopefully but i haven't gotten that part yet and i've also started doing the user management part of it so instead of maintaining the json you also have a user interface where you can maintain the users but that is not fully working yet so um, i'm going to leave a link to this flow and i think i'm going to include everything so you can see how it looks like and how it behaves at the moment but you know it still needs some work and some tweaking and well the user management is only half working i still have to do the same for the event management so you can create events you can change them you can delete them and for the arduino code i also have a github link where i've, I've posted the current version of the code and um, it so far it has a very basic you know readme but you can read about it and also there is a link to this rfid reader that i purchased 
and uh, actually I've purchased two more of these and they were on sale on the 1111 uh, promotion but still I think they are cons I, th I think they are still really really cheap I mean like you know 1699 for the waterproof version and you are also got getting 10 tags and if you look at the waterproof version the whole thing the back of this thing is potted so it it is definitely looks like a very decent uh, you know RFID reader I don't I don't think you can make the difference but this is the you know the non waterproof versions and in the waterproof version the cables are connected and this whole thing is potted in a clear resin so you know water can get into the electronics and hopefully it won't and in terms of the Arduino code I used a node MCU but I'm only using a couple of pins so this could be a VMOS D1 mini as well I mean so far as you can see I'm only using basically like three data pins which are also on the D1 mini so you don't have to use a, a node MCU and in the code there is a single file that you really need to care about which is the settings.h and this contains all your you know user IDs MQTT credentials so you just change those you update those you should be able to upload the sketch to your ESP and it should work so that's it and then one last comment you are getting this leaflet with the uh, with this unit and this has in the documentation there is a section 5 which says access control mode conversion and here it says how you can switch this unit that instead of uh, working as an access control mode it just uh, goes into a vegan 26 output mode so that's the mode where it actually outputs all the codes on these two wires the the D1 and the D0 which is the green and the white so this documentation is going to tell you how you switch the unit to that mode basically you just need to power on with one of these uh, wires grounded and then you have to do it once and then it would remember so that's the only thing that you need to do otherwise your code is not going to or you're not going to receive any codes uh, from the reader so very straightforward to convert this unit from a you know normal one-stop access control solution to just a, a basic uh, reader but I think that will be all for today. You can expect updates on these projects in the future. Probably it's not going to be really quick because you know by the time I will install this outside, it's probably going to be in the spring when the weather, the good weather comes back. So it's probably going to take me a couple of months to really finish this, add all the you know the outputs and then you know the reading options and then tidy up the node red flow but I think the main part is already working so if you start using the flow that I have at the moment you would be able to plug in the additional features later on because you know the identification part and the logging part is already complete so I'm going to focus more on you know some of the things like you know more identification options and and maintenance screen and the UI uh, mainly that was all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.